Hey, I'm Rick, and you're watching the Ditch Pig Experience. In today's episode, we're going to rip into this clutch and see if we can get this thing mobile again. Today's the day. I put it off long enough. I've got to get this clutch fixed so that I can drive my truck again. Uh, I went this morning and picked up some brake fluid. I had to get a, another 4 liter jug because I burnt through the other one. Here's the O-ring set. Uh, hopefully they're the right ones. There's three in there. I, I have no idea what that actually takes until I get it apart. I won't know. Came with some uh, Parker O-ring lube. I guess they say that it's a must-have. Comes with enough to do the uh, job, I guess. The parts came in last week, but I've been putting it off because I haven't been wanting to do it. And I've also been uh, spending some time on this thing. With spring being here and all and being able to get out on that, I'm not going to lie, it's been a lot of fun and that's taken up some of my time. But there's no excuse for laziness and procrastination, so today I'm going to rip into this thing and hopefully get it fixed. Because going without this thing has been murder. I'm super excited to get back in it and start pulling some gears and uh, hitting some trails going off-road. But I'm not going to lie, I'm looking forward to this like I am probably a boot to the taint because it's not fun pulling that thing out of there. What I'm going to do is just only do the bare necessities, unhook only what I have to unhook. Uh, initially I was like, yeah, I'll pull everything out of it and clean up the T-case and the transmission, paint them, uh, have everything nice and pretty when it goes back in. No, I'm just going to slide that thing back just far enough that I can get my hands up in there to get that slave cylinder out off the input shaft. And I'm going to clean that all up and put the O-rings in it, jam it back together, send this thing. Another time, I'll have to tear it apart again and maybe then I'll do the painting and cleaning and all that stuff. For right now, I just want this thing operational. So i got my garage floor laid out. i got the wheels chalked. Uh, I'm going to pull those dry shafts, just unhook one end. Enough to slide the, the whole issue back. Now I'm going to pull both the shifters out of this, pull the hump off of it, take care of that so that it can slide back. Well, I got four of these transmission cross member nuts to get off. This torque bracket here, take that off. I'll pop that starter off, just a couple bolts there. I think there's like five bell housing bolts. I can't remember now, four or five anyways now. So I'll spin those out, they should be easy to get at. Then I'll just chuck a jack underneath of this and try and move it all back. I'll put some ratchet straps underneath about here to help cradle it. I just need enough room to get in there to slide that slave off the input shaft. And then we're in business. So everything that I'm doing here, you can see it in other videos that I've done. Uh, I had the transmission swapped up there last spring. Uh, there's like a three, four video series on that. So if you want to see this more in depth, you can check that out this time around. I'm going to spare you the boredom of that and uh, I'm just going to slam and jam the thing, get it done as quick as I can, get the thing mobile again. Fucking anus, get out of here. I had a bit of trouble getting this thing into neutral with load on it. I tried bumping it with the key and that didn't work. So yeah, when I took out that rear dry shaft, had some force on it, the weight of the truck. She's in neutral, so it'll be easier going back together. Wag your tail if you're a wiener head. Yep, you're a wiener head. Camera sniffer. So 
So there is five bell housing bolts to this. There's one here, two down there, and two on this side. There is also another hole right up in here in the bell housing, but there's nothing for the block. And there's one in here. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's in the block, but not in the bell housing. So where this is uh, an LS, it just doesn't line up 100% on this, but that's all right. The five does the trick, obviously. I love brake fluid. All right, we're at the stage of the game now where we gotta get a jack under this thing. So I'm gonna break these cross member bolts loose and the torque bracket loose. So since I'm on a dirt driveway, I lay down boards to help this thing roll a little better. All right, I got all the bolts out of her. This one here I had to leave in because my fuel pump's directly in back of it. But it uh, doesn't matter, we're gonna clear it anyways. It looks like she's ready to roll back. There she goes, she's off the dowels. Now to try and wiggle her back. It looks like she wants to dip to the passenger side, so I'm just going to move the dry shaft over here to help try and balance it a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna throw a ratchet strap around this because when that thing came clear, it tried to tip back because I don't think I have it balanced to 100%. Don't need much on it for tension, just enough to keep it from dropping. So yeah, I got like four or five inches of the bell housing away from the block. There we go. You can see she's pretty grimy in there. There's our slave cylinder that's gotta come out. And if you look down here, oh, there's where all our fluid's going. I'll pull this out and uh, see about getting a seal kit put in it. Friggin' brake fluid. Yeah. Yes, sir. Doesn't look too bad up in there as far as the clutch and pressure plate goes. A little bit of corrosion on it, but flywheel's got a little bit of rust on it. But that's power for the course. It's been in there a year and a half, so. But anyway, let's go have a look at this. So, yeah, this thing doesn't look too bad. The bearing itself feels good. Let's clean everything up and uh, put the brake clean to her. There's a bit of a mark on this piece that slides in and out. 
I don't know if you can see that or not. Right there. It doesn't feel real rough, but I can just barely pick it up with my thumbnail, so. Uh, okay, so let's get this uh, ring off the end here. It's kind of like a snap ring. We'll get that off and then we can get the uh, seals out. Too easy. Mmm, more brake fluid. So yeah, other than the, that little nick right there, it looks pretty good. My guess is it's something when I was pushing the clutch pedal, something went through it and it just took the seal out, so. Okay, we ran into a roadblock. Here, it's pretty easy to tell. These seals, and you look at this seal. This is the big one that's in the back. It's got another small one that's in the front, but they're way thicker than these. Yeah, wrong parts. Probably what I'll do is, uh, I think I'm just gonna order a whole new slave cylinder, because like I say, this has got a few marks on it. Uh, when I ordered it off of Summit, basically the pictures it said you know the picture might not be exactly as as the product shown i was a little worried about that like oh am i gonna end up with the right stuff some of the ones that i saw had uh wiper rings plus o rings and and i had no idea what was inside of this until i tore it apart i should have called the company and just said hey what exactly is the part number for for this uh slave cylinder but i didn't so yeah that puts a hold on things for at least a week probably by the time i order i might just order that right today uh through summit i think they're like 250 bucks something like that i'll order it up and it'll get shipped and be here within a week so i'll end this video off here and uh we'll see you when i get some more parts and we'll get her thrown back together and make some noise thanks for watching you guys like comment subscribe all that good stuff and we'll see you next time